So now we come to the third keynote of today, and this is by XX Lab from Indonesia. So I want to welcome uh, XX Lab. All five members could come here. Uh, they are our next idea, first Alpine Art and Technology Grant winners from this year. And uh, you can find their exhibition, their project Soya Couture or Soya Culture at the exhibition. They'll do some workshops. And now I hand over for the presentation. Thank you, Claudia. So, hello. Uh, we're waiting for. So, we are come from XX Lab. We come from Indonesia. Yogyakarta is a little town in Indonesia. And uh, so we come from a very different background. So that's us. So I'm Irana Agrifina. Uh, people call me Ira. And Asa Rahmana, Eka Ratna Juwita, and Atina Rizkiana. So XXLAP is a female co uh, collective. So like, like I said before, we come from a various background, artists, designers, programmers, and we are focusing on art, science, and free technology. And we are facilitated by Hon Foundation in Yogyakarta. So we based in Yogyakarta, it's an ancient city, and Asa maybe will tell more about it. Well, okay, so uh, Yogyakarta is, uh, is the cultural city of Indonesia, so the artists live there, and also uh, there's a lot of universities, so uh, people also knew this city as a city of students because there's a lot of people going there to go to have uh, to continue their education <laughs> include yeah in, it's include us because most of us is not from this city we are from the outside the other city but we go there uh, for education and then uh, we continue to to do a lot of things in Jogja because yeah it's it's it has this environment where people uh, do a lot of creative things, starting and initiating uh, a lot of, yeah, interesting stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh. Oops. Okay, uh, we'll wait for the video here. Oops. Sama udah. Tadi mau. Okay, maybe next. Well, it's okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, this is Jogja. Well, um, it's it's important for us to uh, to explain the background of the uh, cultural life in Jogja and also, uh, yeah. So uh, our project is about soya and um, soya culture and soya is is really part of our daily life because there's a lot of uh, food product made from soya and it's some kind of uh, protein source of protein the cheapest protein source in Yogyakarta so people people love to eat it and and, and it's also uh, yeah people love it and it's also cheap so it's they consume it very much yeah this 
Paddy Paddy Field Yes, this is the people of Jogja. And this is Batik. Yeah, the textile from Indonesia. Okay. Okay, that's all about Jogja and then um next okay, talking about <laughs> Okay. Now let's talk. Uh, let's start to talk about the project. So this is uh the things you see, that's tempeh and tofu. The food product that I was talking about, that people, people eat, eat it almost every day, like, like here, what do you say, the sausage or ham, something like that. <laughs> yeah, this is soya culture. And uh, my friend, Atina, you can call her Kiki. Uh, she, <laughs> she will explain it to you. Hello, everyone in here. It's um, firstly, it's great to meet you all. Well, I'm going to tell a bit about how we first came out with the idea of the soya culture. Um, well, uh, as Ira uh, already shared to all of you how we met, uh, fortunately, all of us have the same uh, perspective, have the same uh, vision about our concern on the environment and the community. And in Jogja, as you see, the, um, we have lots of protein product um, made from soya, uh, tofu, maybe some of you know tofu and tempeh, and there's a lot of uh, small industries in Jogja, and they um, they still they still using the the traditional um, traditional methods, which means that they um, they produce lots of weights, especially the um, the the liquid and the material waste, and uh, yeah, that's that is how the first time. The, our first concern because the waste they usually uh, throw away the liquid waste and became a pollution for the river and uh, yeah so we started thinking what can we do with the waste what can we use the waste for um, so we started think about making it as a material that is cheap affordable and is really um, easy to make so that anybody could make it in their own kitchen without needing any lab equipment or a fancy kind of lab tools. And uh, yeah, for the more um, knowledge about how the process itself, uh, Ratna will tell us about. Okay, uh, the experiment process of our uh, project is very easy. What you need is only um, the tofu production waste, it's a liquid waste, and then we can add it a vinegar, sugar, and then uh, we can use a bacteria from a liquid from the old coconut, because it's, so it's very easy. Even uh, if you go to the traditional market, we just, we just get it for, as a free. So just leave it and then uh, we wait until 10 to 12 day and voila it it be uh, it it create a new uh, material we call it uh, nata sheet it's very easy because um, we can use it uh, we can make it in our kitchen um, and um, let's call it 
Um, and for this project, we collaborate with the. Uh, well, uh, traditional maker in uh, in Jogja. So we uh, try to empower empower the woman uh, in in uh, in especially in the village. Um, so yeah, we collaborate with uh, we try to sharing the knowledge to some of uh, what we call crafter. Of the, they usually make nata the cocoa, so it's kind of like this, but it's made from coconut, and uh, it is a very common dessert in Indonesia. So the techniques are basically not new, but we change the material into uh, soya because uh, it is it is yeah it's it, it's usually thrown away and uh, yeah because of the environment issue of course because it makes a pollution and. Yeah, so we met this uh, group of women who usually make nata de coco and um, we uh, shared the knowledge on how to make nata de soya. And uh, first uh, there was only one and then their friends come and then there's this group that we, uh, we asked them to start to make uh, the nata de soya and they, uh, right now they make, make it for us and we were hoping that it would grow bigger and it became an and it has potential to to empower them financially economically and uh, um yeah and besides the crafters and uh, the uh, uh the groups of women of making nata de coco we also collaborate with some designers uh, architects um fashion designers and others, and perhaps Ratna could tell more. Uh, for f first uh, collaboration project, we collaborate with uh, one of a uh, fashion label in Indonesia. We try to create a um, new fabric from this material. Uh, so uh, for the next level, uh, this material can be used and make uh, in an easy way and cheap. Maybe after this, uh, for fu our future experiment, Eka will explain uh, more about that. Oh, video, video, video. After this, uh, video, video. maybe you, Asa will uh, place our profile video of our project, and then Eka will explain more about our future experiment. Alright, so this is the uh, video, a short video about what we are doing in this project. Um, I, I don't know if you can read the subtitle, but uh, yeah, well, we, <laughs> we're going to tell them. Can, can you read the subtitles or I will just read it to all of you? <laughs> okay. Ini. Bagaimana caranya? Kita tanya XX Lab. XX Lab adalah Kira, Eka, Asa, Ratna, dan Kiki. Pada tahun 2013 di Yogyakarta, mereka ikut serta dalam workshop elektronika dasar oleh Stefani Musi yang diberi judul Miss Baltazar. Selepas workshop, mereka kemudian membentuk sebuah kolektif baru bernama XX Lab. XX dari kromosom perempuan. XX Lab menjadi wadah kolektif bagi para perempuan dari beragam latar belakang dan disiplin ini untuk mengeksplorasi seni, sains, dan teknologi. Di mana salah satu proyek yang mereka kerjakan adalah soya kuda yang mengolah limbah tahu menjadi material sandang dan kerajinan tangan. Bahan yang diperlukan adalah 
Limbah tahu, cuka, gula, urea, dan starter bakteri. Kita ambil limbah tahunya, rebus hingga mendidih bersama cuka, gula, dan urea. Setelah itu, pindahkan ke bagi dan tunggu hingga dingin. Setelah dingin, kita masukkan starter bakteri yang kita buat sendiri dari air kelapa yang sudah tua. Tutup rapat bagi dengan kertas dan simpan di tempat yang tidak terkena cahaya langsung. Bakteri akan membentuk lembaran nata de soya atau mikrobial selulose. Selanjutnya, lembar nata kita pres agar airnya keluar. Dan begini hasilnya. Sekarang, nata kita keringkan untuk diproses lebih lanjut dengan pewarna alam serta dilapis dengan lilin lebah agar menjadi lebih kuat. Lembar nata yang sudah diwarna dan dilapis lilin bisa kita manfaatkan sebagai material sandang dan kerajinan tangan seperti ini. Pengolahan limbah kedelai menjadi penting karena Indonesia adalah konsumen kedelai terbesar di dunia. Bayangkan berapa banyak limbah yang mengotori perairan dan merusak ekosistem jika hal itu dibiarkan begitu saja. Sementara jika diolah, limbah bisa memiliki nilai ekonomi dan mempunyai potensi pengembangan yang lebih luas. Dengan prinsip do it yourself, do it with other, serta keyakinan bahwa pengetahuan harus dapat dibagikan dengan bebas, XX Lab berharap akan lebih banyak lagi pihak yang tertarik untuk mengolah limbah kedelai. All right, so uh, yeah, I think you already see in the presentation video. Uh, to us, uh, we think that uh, this project is full of possibilities for the future. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm sorry. It's <laughs> to begin with the last item on here. So uh, uh, so. For a long time, uh, the people in Jogja uh, have been making similar uh, similar item for food, uh, same kind of cellulose sheets, but of course they used to do it traditionally. And uh, um, now for this project and for the Prix Arts Electronica exhibition, uh, we've been doing a simple experiment making an incubator slash temperature controller using uh, Arduino and a small, very cheap uh, temperature sensor, and then a very simple switch, a relay switch. And we also sort of hack a regular household object. So basically you can use anything that use um, AC electrical power, like light bulb, regular light bulb, or regular heater, or electric stove, or solder, or iron, or anything uh, as a source of heat. So. Uh, the bacteria culture and then the microbial sheets can only grow if the temperature is warm enough from 30 to 32 um, degrees Celsius and if the temperature is stable. So uh, for now for our exhibition in the downtown fashion district, uh, we've, we've already uh, made a small incubator um, and temperature controller to make sure that the bacteria and then the cellulose sheets grow properly. But uh, in the future, if we want to produce um, the sheets in a larger quantity, uh, we we think that uh, we'll need to figure out how to make a room temperature controller uh, for a bigger scale. And also, uh, I think we've already mentioned uh, previously that we've been working with the local uh, village women. Uh, some of them are homemakers and some of them are um, home industry crafters but to make the to make the project sustainable uh, we are seeking to collaborate with uh, more high end fashion designers and fashion labels to make the project sustainable if there are demands then uh, there will be more need for the products that way we can utilize the wastewater from the 
many uh, tofu factories in Yogyakarta and even Indonesia. And also, um, yeah, the other things. Uh, so 3D printing in Indonesia is not really as widespread as it is in Europe. Uh, some, some large companies, of course, and universities already have 3D printers, but for uh, maybe smaller companies or the people or smaller educational institutions, uh, we don't really have 3D printers uh, and also the material, the silicon material. But actually, the microbial cellulose sheets uh, have some similarity with uh, the material that uh, people normally use for 3D printing. So in the future, we'd like to explore further about that. And also, um, maybe you you saw in the video after we made the cellulose sheet. There are there's still some res residue water that's left over from the whole process. Uh, for now, usually we just throw it to the land because it contains some it contains some compounds that good for for plants. But uh, it has a very tiny amount of uh, microbial fuel material. So uh, we are seeking to uh, investigate further into that to amplify maybe the content of fuel or something so we can use it as biofuel source. And also another thing that's not on here is a very simple thing, but uh, we, are, we are looking forward to doing this. Uh, we've been documenting all of our process, so uh, we are planning to share everything. Um, I think you saw it on our video. We believe that knowledge should be free to share and distribute because actually the knowledge is not really ours. We didn't come up with how to make all the microbial sheets. No, the people have been doing it for centuries. So uh, we want to um, document and share the results of our experiment uh, and all the tools. And then uh, for the tools, we also use open source hardware and software. So that should be no problem to share. We're planning to share all the information on our wiki page. So maybe not only in Yogyakarta, but also in other cities in Indonesia and maybe Southeast Asia or all over the world can benefit for, from this project. And thank you. Yeah, that please. Okay. So thank you. We are from Access Lab, very glad to be here. And uh, we have a workshop tomorrow. So you all can come and join us. Thank you.